<sighs> yes, yes, I know. It's morning already. It looks, camera looks almost washed out for some reason. It must be the lighting. Good thing no one uh, <clears throat> wants to look at the lighting or the, the, the video or the, the anything like that. I mean, my mask, uh, <laughs> my, my mask goatee creates this nice little uh, woo swoop there and everything. Um, anyway, it's been a great day so far, but I mean, it hasn't even started yet. So we'll just say it's been a great day, right? That's how you start a day. Anyway, we have the borrowers of field. And what we're on today is chapter four. So if you remember, she kind of, Kate was kind of getting some ideas from this uh, old Tom, giving her uh, answers on her borrower questions. So let's go ahead here and jump into chapter four and see what's going on. Also, remember to like, share, subscribe, and grab your copy of the book. Here, let's go. And all that was needed now, she thought, was for old Tom to tell her everything in as full detail as Arietti must have told it to him. And having already said so much, he might, she felt, go this much further, in spite of his fear of things put down in writing. And she wouldn't tell either. She resolved staunchly. At any rate, not during his lifetime. Although why he should mind so much, she couldn't understand, seeing that he was known already as the biggest liar in five counties. But what seemed still more hopeful was that having shown her the little book, he had not even asked for it back. She had it now in bed with her, stuffed beneath her pillow, and it was full of things and writing. Not that she could understand them quite, the entries were too short. Little headings, they seemed like, jotted down by Arietti to remind herself of dates. But some of them sounded extraordinarily weird and mysterious. Yes, she decided, suddenly inspired. That was the way it would work. She would ask old Tom to explain the headings. What could Arietti have meant by Black Men Mother Saved? And this was, more or less, what did happen. While Miss May talked business each day with Messrs. Jobson, Thring, Be Good, and Be Good, and or argued with builders and plumbers and plumbers' mates, Kate would wander off alone across the fields and find her way to the cottage, seeking out old Tom. On some days... He would seem a bit cagey and disinterested, but on other days, a particular heading in the diary would seem to inspire him and his imagination would take wings and sail away on such swirls and eddies of vivid memory that Kate, spellbound, could hardly believe that he had not, at some time, been a borrower himself. Miss May, Kate remembered, had said that this of her younger brother. This brother who, although three years his junior, must have known old Tom. Had they been friends? Great friends, perhaps? They certainly seemed birds of a feather. One famous for telling tall stories because he was such a tease. The other more simply described as the biggest liar in five counties. And it was this thought which long after she was grown up, decided Kate to tell the world what was said to have happened to Pod and Homily and little Arietti after that dreadful day when smoked out of their house under the kitchen, they sought for refuge in the wild outdoors. Here is her story, all put down in writing. Let us sift the evidence ourselves. So here we go. Here is now the meat of the story. Here is now what is going to happen or what has happened to Pod, Homily, and Arietti 
So let's go ahead and find out. Let, let's go ahead and get this, the, this story started. So, I mean, if you guys aren't intrigued, you guys didn't listen to the last book. I'm just kidding. Anyway, this is a wonderful story. I love the stories of the borrowers. And tune in next time for chapter five, where we actually start getting into the meat of the story and what happened actually comes out. And we get to sift through the evidence. All right. Thank you guys so very much. You all have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed day.